Hi again, here's a continuation of SpriteKit and Swift. So um, in the last video, we set up uh, you know, a player object and a ground object, and we gave them physics properties. So we gave them a physics body, and then in the case of the ground object, we set the dynamic property to false. Okay. So in this um, episode, I'd like to talk a little bit about moving physics bodies. Okay. Now, while you can set the X and the Y property of a physics body, you, that will run into problems because the bodies are actually moved by the physics simulation. So if you have one part of your code trying to set the X and Y and rotation of a sprite, but that sprite is tied to a physics body, and that physics body is, is in the physics simulation, and the physics simulation is moving the body in one direction, but you're trying to set the X or Y in a different direction, then um, you can run into problems, right? Okay, because you have two systems trying to set the position, right? Okay, so what do you do? Well, in order to move physics bodies, what you want to do is you want to use the physics body, you know, or move the physics body by setting or calling methods on the physics body. So rather than calling the X and Y of the sprite, you want to call the physics body and use some of the methods available there to move the physics body. So what kind of methods do we have? So in this example, we're just going to do a simple, um, you know, something simple. And what I want to do is I want to, um, to move the player object up when we tap on the screen. Okay? So there's a couple ways we can do that, right? Um, there are two methods. One of them is apply force and the other ones apply impulse. And these both do two different things, but they're similar, okay? So let's try them out. So I'm gonna switch to game scene, and what I wanna do is I wanna use the touches began method here to detect a touch on the screen. And when we touch the screen, I want to either apply force or apply impulse to our physics body. So for the first example, I'm going to use apply impulse. And you'll see why when I explain what apply impulse does. It's the easier one of the two. Okay? So down here in touches began, what I'll do is I'll say um, uh, player dot physics body dot apply impulse. Okay, and you can see the impulse is a vector. Okay, so a vector is kind of like a CG point, um, but it has, instead of an X and Y, it has a DX and a DY. So it's kind of like distance in the X and Y, okay? Or an amount of motion on the X and Y, okay? So what we'll do, oops, I got rid of that. There we go. So we'll make a, a, a CG vector, and we'll set the, uh, the X to zero. So I want my player to go up, so I'm going to set X to 0 so it doesn't move on the left or the right. And then for the Y, I'm going to set the value to, like, let's say um, 50. Okay? So we'll say player.physicsbody. And again, we could use the exclamation point here. Um, and then we can test this out, right? So we'll, we'll uh, play it. Okay, and you can see when I tap the screen, the object goes up. And if I tap again and again, it keeps going up. So what is apply impulse? Well, apply impulse applies like a one-time, you know, push or impulse to a physics body. Okay, so this applies directly to the physics simulation, so it doesn't, you know, conflict with it. It works directly with it. And impulse is like a one-time thing. Imagine like you have some you know, checkers on a table or some objects on a table and you flick them with your finger. Bing, right? So you just flick them once and then they go flying. Okay? So apply impulse is super simple. It's a one-time thing that happens immediately. You just give, a, give an object like a kick or a quick push. Okay? Right? And then it, it moves. Now the amount here is a little bit arbitrary. This isn't like an amount of pixels. It's amount of, an amount of force as measured by the physics simulation. <clears throat> and they have some, some, some system mapped out where this actually maps to some kind of you know, um, thing that makes sense within the physics simulation. On the screen, though, we can't really say that this is an amount of pixels or something like that, okay? So, so a lot of times you have to, uh, uh, you know, play with the values here for physics to get them to work right. Um, note that this value of 50 would have a different effect if this object was larger or smaller, 
okay? Because the physics simulation also assigns every object a mass, and the mass is based on the size of the sprite on the screen. So when you create the body, you know, and you set the size of the physics body, um, that um, sets the mass, the default mass. And you can change the mass, you know, it's a physics property, so you can say player.physicsbody.mass, and you can set the value to whatever you want. Um, but essentially, you know, if the object is, has more mass, this is going to, you know, apply less of an impulse. You know, if I do an impulse of 50, it's going to have less effect, okay? And if the object is smaller, an impulse of 50 would have a larger effect, okay? So there's a quick example of, of apply impulse. Um, let's talk about apply force for a moment, okay? So I'm going to comment that out. And apply force is a little bit different. Now, apply force... Um, applies a, 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 a motion to the body or gives it a push over time. So imagine apply force more like a motor, right, or an engine that's attached to something, and when you're applying force, the engine is on, okay? So if you have a rocket and it's flying through space, apply force pushes the rocket over time because the rocket engine is, is always on. If you have like a cannon and it's going to fire, you know, a, a, like a cannonball, Apply impulse might actually be better because, you know, it's a one-time explosion that sends the object flying, right? Okay, so for apply, um, for apply force, we'll have to uh, use uh, update down here, right? So update is a method that's called every um, frame within SpriteKit. So essentially, this is called 60 times a second. Okay, I mean, the, that's not always reliable, but, uh, you know, roughly the idea is that this will be called 60 times per second. So what we want to do is when we touch it, when we set, when we set a touch, right, when we touch the screen, we want to um, turn on a switch to say, let's apply force. And when we stop touching the screen, we want to turn the switch off so we stop applying force. Okay, so let's give that a, a test here. To make that work, what we're going to do is we'll, we'll make a variable here. We'll say var... Uh, touching is a bool. We're gonna actually change this later, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna move this stuff into the player object, and that'll make our our clean up our code here a little bit and make the player um, a little more easier to understand. But for right now, for the example, we'll just do it here. So I'm gonna set touching to false, and then down here on touches began, I'll set touching equal to true. And then we'll want to turn that off when you stop touching the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, touches ended. Okay, so this method is the sort of the opposite of touches began. You know, touches began, you just make contact with the screen. Touches ended, you, you break contact with the screen. So here, I'll set touching equal to false again. Okay, and then in update, what we'll do is we'll say, hey, if touching, then player dot physics body dot apply force right and you can see force is a, again as a CG vector so we'll say the force we're gonna apply is um, zero on the X and maybe I'll use a smaller number here I'm not quite sure how much force it'll apply but I'll put 10 right okay and there we go let's give that a try right so remember I commented the apply impulse out right and we'll give this a try, apply force, right? Oh, wait, maybe maybe 10 is not enough, right? Um, let's try 30. Maybe 10 does not have enough force to move the mass of the, uh, the rectangle. Hmm, maybe I made a mistake. Let me check, let me try again. Um, touching is true, right? Let's see, let's try uh, 60. Hmm, let's check. So I got, let's just make sure, let's make sure I got this right. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say um, print uh, touching, wait, let's spell it right. And then we'll go down here, and if this is working, we'll say print go something like that, right? 
Let's give it a try. So we should see this message when we touch the screen, and then it should start saying go until we release, right? Oh, there we go, right? Maybe my, um, maybe 60 is not enough. Maybe 160. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I guess I just didn't use a, a large enough number. But anyway, you can see here when I touch the screen, the the player keeps you know going up while I'm touching, and when I let go, then gravity takes over, right? So what's the difference between these two? Well, um, using apply impulse would be good if you were going to create an object that was going to jump, like it was going to take a leap or you know pop into the air and then fall down again. Um, Apply force might be good in the jetpack situation, so you have an object that flies when you're touching the screen, right? And so it's got a constant energy pushing it up, and then when you release, it'll fall down again, right? Okay? So anyway, there's a quick example of using, um, you know, physics bodies, apply impulse, and apply force.